Hello everyone, my name is Grimdock, and today we're going to be talking about Giants and Dragons. Okay, so I promised a little bit of a longer episode this time, so let's get settled in by the warm fire, relax and grab a keg, and get started, my dudes. Before we begin, I need to go back for a second and apologize. Last video, I had blundered a bit and said that Lolth was banished into the Hells. Well, before we begin, I need to iterate that she was banished into the 66th layer of the Abyss, and not the Hells, and this was known as the Demon Web Pits. People have been asking if they're the same as the Nine Hells, and no, the Nine Hells and the Abyss are not the same. They're located in the Outer Plains around this time period, but they're also both very, very different. If you've ever played Baldur's Gate 3, you'll notice the Blood War going on, which consists of the Abyss and the Hells fighting each other. So anyways, yes, Lolth was banished into the Abyss and not the Nine Hells. So before we get into this episode, let's delve into this a bit and talk about it. Now we talked in episode 1 about the Abyss, and how the shard of pure evil was the reason behind its existence, and how there's many, many layers to it. But for the Nine Hells, however, that's not the case. There's only nine layers, with the ninth being the final layer of the Hells. So the Hells work with each layer below it ruling over the one above it, with the leader of them all on the ninth layer, which would be Asmodeus. So basically, the Hells are what you think they are. Basically an eternal punishment for the evil souls that lived in the mortal realm. However, there's much more to them than that. In episode 11, we will take a break from the timeline and go over everything you guys could possibly learn about the Nine Hells. So expect next episode to be around 30 to 40 minutes long. It will probably become the longest video I've ever made, and I will go into as much detail about everything there as you guys can, you know, can learn. Because if you're curious, the links, this links up to the Shard of Pure Evil that we described in episode one, which is a very, very big deal. Anyways, we will cover the rest next time. So let's grab our drinks and enter into the timeline of D&D again. Okay. So last time we talked about the elves and a little bit about dragons and how they all rose up and laid absolute waste and ruin to the airy empires and the winged folk within. What I didn't cover last time was how the giants began their big rise during these years as well. So let's start out there. Okay, so there's this god called Anam Allfather, or just the Allfather. Now, nobody knows how this guy came into existence. Some sources claim he's the offspring of the primordial forces of law and chaos, and others would tell you this is a deity that wanders the multiverse, creating worlds and gods on a whim, similar to Ao, but perhaps not the same power scale in terms of ability. Anyways, he's basically the chief giant deity and creator of the giant race. A lot of people in the Forgotten Realms refer to this guy as the Prime, or the Great Creator. Some others call him the Progenitor of Worlds, or the Creator by Thought. Whatever the case, this guy's avatar would appear as a massive giant, standing at least a hundred feet tall, if not taller, with a full, large beard and white hair, usually wearing midnight blue-colored robes. Now, Anam had a ton of kids. Like, this guy got busy all the time with the ladies. Anyways, so Anam around this time got with another goddess at that time and got married. And she is called Othea. Or Othea, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing half of these names right, but just bear with me. Now, guys, there really isn't much information you can really find on Othea at this period other than the fact that she married Anam and had many children at that time. Later on in the timeline, she would end up claiming the cold, vast plains with her and Anam's son, Lenaxis, but we'll have to cover that in a future video. So, they had a lot of kids together during this period. They were Lenaxis, Arno and Julian, Masud, Nicias, Obadai, Otar, Rook, Vilmos, and Dunmore. Dunmore was a little different, because many believe him to be the son of Lenaxis, 
But later on, people would say that he's the offspring of the sea god Ultiu and Othea, which means, yeah dude, she cheated and had an affair on Anam. But regardless, at this time, Anam decided, hey, let's celebrate all of this, and he founded the Colossal Kingdom, which would be called the Kingdom of Giants. And this place was called Ostoria. Now, the legends and records differ on exactly when this place was founded. Some sources would claim that this occurred prior to the Tearfall, which was during the Batrachis era, but others would state that it occurred around the same time as the Tearfall, while even others would claim that this place came to be a thousand years later by Anam to celebrate his son's coming of age. The kingdom was basically a gift for Anam's sons and their offspring as a sign of his favor. Later on, it would be split up so that his sons could found their own kingdoms and dynasties. Whatever the case is, this all led up to the time of the giants, just as it was also the same time as the time of the dragons. So, with both races having their big time here, they would end up battling each other in the near future, and we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, so with the giants and dragons basically ruling all of Faerun now, they eventually began to fight over territory, leading to these huge battles between giant nations and dragon realms. But there's another issue that was blazing up on the side when it came to the dragons, and it concerns a certain individual from the last video who is called Nagamat. Now, with Nagamat taking over the airy kingdom of Fukri, he was eventually attacked by followers of Bahamut. Considering that the two dragon gods fought each other consistently, and Nagamat was one of Tiamat's dragon generals, so having Bahamut send his followers to attack him wasn't exactly something new here. Whatever the case is, Nagamat was murdered here, and it came to rise another massive issue with other dragons. This was called the Dragonfall War which was waged between the followers of Tiamat and Bahamut. Now, dudes, the Dragonfall War that came after here was a very big deal. Now, here's where the video will probably get longer than most of the others I've made before, because I really gotta get into the nitty gritty details of this. This wasn't just some run of the mill war. Now, before we cover this, we gotta talk about the Draco Holy Wars. Originally, there was a civil war going on with the dragons to begin with due to ongoing issues I'll cover here in a moment. This was called the Draco Holy Wars. Now, these holy wars were a series of civil wars between the dragons and dragonkind at this time that continued with different species and within different species as well. Now, guys, you're probably thinking, what the heck was the craziest war of all of them then? And this war started over the debate of Io or Asgarath's alignment in nature. Remember the king of the dragon gods? Yeah, he has a bit to play in all this. Anyways, as you guys know, there's different kinds of dragons. Well, each kind or species of dragon believed Asgarath represented their particular version of their race. The gold dragons believed that Asgarath was like them kind and lawful good, and they'd eventually convince the other silver dragons that that was the case as well. Well, the red dragons claimed Asgarath and Io was red like them instead, and was chaotic evil, and it would end up with these crazy fights between them, one of which is claimed to be the most violent, and that one was sprung up due to that issue with the dragon followers of Asgarath that we just talked about. <laughs> Hello lads! Okay, so there's probably a bit of confusion when it comes to this chaotic evil and chaotic neutral and lawful good thing. Remember dudes, if you've ever played a classic D&D campaign, these terms would pop up a lot. So it kind of starts with this spectrum, where at the top you had lawful good, and then you had neutral good, and then chaotic good at the bottom, and then it kind of got into the neutral section where you had true neutral, lawful neutral and then chaotic neutral and then below that you had chaotic evil which is at the very very bottom and then in the middle you had neutral evil and then lawful evil and this kind of spectrum works with a person's morality 
So it kind of describes the character that you're, you know, affiliating with or how that character would interact with the outside world. I'll leave kind of a link to this spectrum down below if you guys are curious. Uh, just things like that. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of basically the gist of it. So anyways, let's get back to some dragons. So the holy wars were fought over this and would, would basically happen throughout time after the first rise of the dragons. Now, we gotta backtrack and get back into the Dragonfall War, because dudes, it kinda gets wild from here. Okay, so after Nagamot was slain, Tiamat was really mad, and Tiamat would end up creating a bunch of dragon aberrations and new warped dragon beings from her eggs, and these new species and creatures would be called the spawn of Tiamat. And this war raged on for a very, very long time, by the way. It's said to continue on even in the current era of the Forgotten Realms. Bahamut would end up countering Tiamat's creations by creating something of his own, called the Dragonborn. Hey again, dudes. So if you've ever played Baldur's Gate 3, you'll understand that the Dragonborn is actually a playable race. Well, this is how that race came into existence. So there's a fun fact for you guys to think about. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, so the Dragonfall War here is by some considered to be an ongoing issue even into the current era of D&D. And we'll have to go back to it later on down the timeline. So hang in there, guys. Hopefully some of you guys have seen the previous episodes and if you haven't, go and take a peek. We're going to be taking a quick break with episode 11 being a big, big upcoming video about the Nine Hells, where I'll be covering the lore and the ancient history of their existence very soon. So I hope you guys are ready for that when it comes out. Otherwise, episode 12 will see us returning to what happens next in the timeline, so I hope you dudes are ready. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you made it this far and like what you see, it wouldn't hurt for you to click on that like and subscribe button down below. Anyways guys, remember if you saw any lore I got incorrect, don't hesitate to tell me what I got wrong in the comments down below as well. I love you guys so much, this channel just keeps growing and growing more than I ever anticipated it to, and hopefully I see it grow some more into the future. Anyways dudes, this is Grimdoc the Lore Master, signing out.